بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, Today we're going to continue chapter 3 uh, What we have here in this uh, uh, section we have the energy method What is the energy method? The energy method is a, uh, another method used to derive the equation of motion of mechanical system Okay, so we have already known uh, the um, uh, Newton second law to derive the equation of motion, right? Now this method, energy method, is also another uh, valid method to derive the equation of motion. Okay, however, however, this method is only applicable to conservative systems, to conservative mechanical system. Okay, what does it mean conservative mechanical system? System uh, uh, that has no energy loss, okay, at any time, okay. I, I will show you in a minute what does that mean. Before we go to the method, let's uh, talk uh, briefly or review briefly what do we know about uh, energy, okay. What do we know about work, for example? Work, okay, what is work? Work is the force applied uh, multiplied by the distance, okay. The work is a form of energy. Okay, so the uh, SI unit for work is a Newton meter or Joule or a Newton meter. Okay. Power. Power is what? Power is time rate change of doing work. So it's going to be Newton meter per second. Okay, now how can we define energy? Energy is the capacity to do work. Okay, energy is the capacity to do work. So the units are the same as work. Okay. Okay. All right, now where do we see energy in mechanical system? We see energy in mechanical system. Okay, let me use the pen. <clears throat> there are two sources of energy in mechanical systems. Okay, the first one is the mass. Okay, the first one is the mass. Okay, now for the mass, there are two types of energy that we see in a mass. Either kinetic energy, if the mass is moving, or potential energy if the mass is uh, above a datum line, okay? All right. So if this mass is moving, okay, we have x. So there is a kinetic energy. If this mass is above the table, for example, or the floor, okay? So this is h. We have potential energy okay these are the two types of energy what about the other type of uh, or source of uh, energy in a uh, um, uh, mechanical system spring spring has only potential energy it has no kinetic energy because there is no mass kinetic energy for the mass is half m times the velocity squared if it's in translational motion if it's if it's in torsional motion have the mass moment of inertia times the velocity squared. This is for the kinetic energy, for a moving mass. Potential energy for a, a mass, if it's above a datum line, if it's above a datum line, it's going to be the mass times g, which is the weight, this is the weight, times the h, which is the, the height or elevation above the uh, uh, floor. Okay? So we will have potential energy. Okay? All right. Now, what about the spring? The spring has only potential energy. If you press a spring, okay, if you uh, press a spring, this is uh, X, okay, if you press a spring, this is the force applied, okay, this is K, so half K times X squared, okay. The, the displacement is squared. This is for translational motion. And for torsional motion, if you have a, a stiffness, torsional stiffness, it's going to be half k theta squared. Okay, half k theta theta squared. As simple as that. Okay, so these are the how can we find the energy in a mechanical system. All right, before we go and see examples how the uh, uh, energy method is working, let's talk about the equilibrium position. Remember the equilibrium position from the last lecture? Okay, 
What is the equilibrium position? Equilibrium position, if you have unstretched spring, and then you attach a mass to this spring, there will be static deflection. This new line or new position, we call it the equilibrium position or static equilibrium position. Okay, so I'm going to call this static equilibrium position. I will call it X. Okay, I will call it X. All right. And all the way from the beginning, before attaching the mass, after the static deflection, then pulling the mass around the new static equilibrium position, which is X, it's going to be how much? It's going to be delta plus X, delta plus X. All right. Now let's assume this equilibrium position is my datum line. Let's assume this is my datum line. Okay. What I'm trying to do here, by the way, Shabab, what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to show you that if we are talking about equilibrium position, okay, the, the, um, the um, uh, uh, potential energy due to the weight around the equilibrium position, okay, will be, uh, will be canceled with the uh, uh, force uh, in the static from the, from the spring from the static deflection. Okay, as simple as that. I'm going to prove it to you. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to calculate the po total potential energy around this uh, uh, datum line. So how much the total can, uh, potential energy around this po uh, uh, datum line? It's going to be the weight, the weight, or the potential energy due to the weight around this equilibrium position, which is minus, because below the datum line, minus mgx, plus the uh, potential energy from the spring, all the way before attaching the mass, after attaching the mass, then the equilibrium position. So it's going to be K delta plus uh, X dx from all the way from zero to X. Okay. So here we have K delta and we have K X. Okay. From, from this integration, it will be K delta X. And from this integration, it will be half K X squared. All right. Now, remember from the uh, previous uh, lecture, Remember, at the datum line or at the equilibrium posi position, the weight of the mass, the weight of the mass around the equilibrium position is equal to the uh, force from the static deflection. That's why the mass, if you do not move the mass at this point, the mass will not move, right? It will not move, right? What does it mean, what will not move, unless you give it some initial condition? The weight of the mass is equal to K delta. All right, so what does that mean? That means this will cancel with this, right? So what's left? Half k x squared. So what is the only, this is the conclusion, inshallah. What's the only, this is the only potential energy about, oops, let me erase this. This is a common error happening only with PowerPoint. Okay. About, about the equilibrium position. X. This is the only potential energy around the equilibrium position. Okay. This is the conclusion that we need to remember from now on until the end of the semester. Whenever we're talking about equilibrium position, if I tell you X is about around the equilibrium position, what's the conclusion here? The conclusion, okay, the only potential energy, only potential energy is from spring due to, due to uh, displacement X, which is around equilibrium position okay this is the conclusion i'll show you examples next inshallah in the next uh, video i will show you examples what does that mean okay let's uh, continue the theory behind this uh, chapter then we will solve examples all right now in any problem in any problem how can we use energy method to derive the equation of motion how to use energy method to derive the equation of motion first of all this is the first condition it must be conservative system what does it mean conservative system there is no damper in the system if you have a damper in the system then what does that mean that means the uh, energy uh, is not conservative in the system after a while the system will stop 
because the kinetic energy will uh, be lost in a form of heat in the damper, in the damper, okay? So the damper role is to absorb the energy out of the mechanical system in a form of heat due to friction, right? All right, so you have to make sure there is no damper in the system. All right, if the system is conservative, then how can you use the energy method? Total energy from here, from this equation, the total potential and kinetic energy in the mechanical system all the time is constant. At any time is constant. In other words, the time derivative of this total kinetic and potential energy is equal to zero. Okay, and from here, you will get your equation of motion. And from the equation of motion, you will get your natural frequency. Okay, this is the method that we use all uh, the time if we need to use energy method to derive the equation of motion. Okay, the energy method. This is how we use it. Okay, this is how we do it. Take the time derivative of the total kinetic and, and potential energy, and it will be your equation of motion. All right, so in some problems, in one problem, maybe in the homework, you will uh, be required to find the magnitude uh, the magnitude of the oscillation it's a harmonic motion and the natural frequency without uh, finding the equation of motion you don't need it so how are you going to do this simply the ca maximum kinetic energy will be simply equal to the maximum potential energy from here you can get the natural frequency and amplitude okay but this is the method that we're going to use all the time to derive the equation of motion all right so what we're going to do in the next video, we will solve more problems, okay, using the energy method and also double we will double check by using uh, Newton's second law, all right? So we'll see you there, inshallah. Thank you very much.